So hello everyone. Um, I am working at Centria University of Applied Sciences and also in the research and development uh, group at Chemistry and Bioeconomy especially. And uh, today I would like to tell, give you an introduction to the world of non-wood forest products. And I have to warn you that my approach is more or less uh, business and technology driven. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the definition of non-wood forest products, the demand and opportunity, uh, the status in Finland, status of industrial manufacturing, and give some global examples of needs and businesses. And finally, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the quality characterization, characterization work and also give you some uh, examples of test results of the uh, samples. Non-wood forest products or non-timber forest products or natural products. There are uh, several different definitions, but they all mean basically the same like berries, leaves, bark, etc. But at Centria Chemistry and Bioeconomy team, we are treating those as biomass, meaning that uh, there are similar processing technologies and quality control methods applying for both wild and cultivated biomasses. So we are uh, handling and dealing with wild and cultivated berry, berries, uh, residue biomass from logging and food processing. And also there could be side and waste streams from biomass, for example, from food industry. So there is a lot of uh, opportunities to refine these uh, biomass-based raw materials into high value added products. And here I have logos of three different projects. Um, Two of those more and this and interact. Novel Baltic are currently ongoing and in last note it has already ended, but I will tell you some results from those projects as well. So there is a global market demand for high quality, authentic non wood forest products such as health food, superfood, cosmetics, hygiene, or even pharmaceutical products. And at the same time, there's a huge opportunity. There are plenty of high quality. Arctic or Nordic raw materials uh, with high concentrations of valuable ingredients and mainly due to the long daylight hours during uh, growing, season, growing season. So here I give you an example of value growth uh, for the Bilberry case. And of course the prices can vary depending on the crop, annual crop. So if it was like 1.4 euros per kilogram, uh, picked and then picked and cleaned four euros and for powder four hundred euros per kilogram and if it's sold as an extract uh, it could be three thousand five hundred euros and if it's sold as anthocyanins uh, it could be more than ten thousand euros per, per kilogram so there are plenty of opportunities to refine these high value um, raw materials into high value added products in the nordic countries here I'm showing you a megatrend analysis from Europe Monetary International, which shows well uh, that it, it is supporting the non-wood forest forest uh, opportunities. The um, statistics is a couple of years old, but in my opinion, it's still very valid. I have highlighted in red some of the keywords like premiumization, authenticity, health is the new wealth, transparency, brand identity, security and health. Finland, uh, we have had national non-wood forest products action plan since 2014, and the work was coordinated by the University of Helsinki Ruralia Institute. We have had a bioeconomy strategy since 2014, and the non-wood forest products have been included in that strategy and currently is being updated. We also have had a sector reports for the natural products sector since 2015. And um, also the uh, annual statistics for wild berries and mushrooms picked for sale. Like in 2019, you can see the numbers that were picked, uh, uh, the amounts that were picked for, for sale for bilberries and lingonberries. However, uh, the fact is that uh, almost 90% or even more of, of wild berries are left in the forest annually. So, which means that there is a bottleneck, especially if you are refining. A, there are a lot of raw materials, but uh, it's not refined to the full extent. 
Of course, we need to be sustainable as well. I'm not saying that it's not sustainable, but in a sustainable way. Some words about the status of industrial manufacturing, because there are many profitable medium and large scale enterprises. And the business has been growing, and particularly in Central Europe, uh, North America and Asian countries. Here you can see some examples of turnovers from European enterprises like Naserex, 405 million euros, the Italian Indena and the Swiss Linnea. These companies uh, use typically both cultivated and collected wild plants as raw materials. The raw material collection and harvesting is done according to good agricultural practices and uh, they conform to international standards and good manufacturing practices. So it's very important that the whole value chain um, is traceable. These companies typically also invest in research and development. So how could Nordic or Arctic industry compete with the Asian enterprises? Um, obviously, uh, we need to have transparent and traceable manufacturing from raw materials to finished products. And it's important to show the proof of quality. Uh, we need to have high level quality standards. And it's also very um, beneficial if the raw material is organic or wild. Yeah, you, one could also pay attention to reduction of man, industrial manufacturing costs. Like you could look into the, if you could, uh, utilize waste energy. This is an example from, from the Industry Nordic project and uh, showing just the, that the value is close to customer. And, uh, how to add volume and value uh, in the case of Nordic berries. You, you should uh, focus on consumer products, high-end segments in the selected export markets, and brand building like Arctic cleanliness and premium content. Uh, the focus should also be on various health benefits and origin. It's also recommended uh, to cooperate in marketing. Some examples from global demand, and this case is from Germany. Uh, there is an aging population which needs more health food and wellness products. And the value of natural products is constantly growing. So there is a huge potential for high quality Finnish or Nordic products. In the United Arab Emirates, uh, they have the highest rates of obesity, diabetes, two cardiovascular diseases in the world. And the government has uh, increased its efforts to fight common health diseases. So uh, the uh, health and wellness food product sales has been something like 1.25 billion US dollars some years ago. This is an example from an Italian company called Zuccari. And as you can see from the photo, they are utilizing almost all parts of the tree. This company was founded in 1993. They make food supplements and cosmetics. They have sales in 34 countries. And some years ago, their turnover was 11.5 million euros. And the bird's trees come from Finland. Some examples uh, from Birdsap. Uh, the biggest manufacturers have not been from the Nordic countries so far. Uh, but they have been from UK, uh, uh, USA, uh, France, but they are uh, lose, using SAP from Eastern Europe and Latvia, for example. Products can be typically drinks and food, pharmaceuticals, food supplements, cosmetics and hygiene. Uh, the Finnish Nordic Koivu and their tapped brand sold in 2015 worth 200 and 50,000 pounds of their SAP products. And according to the new nutrition business forecast, the wood and plant-based water business should grow into, no, sorry, I can't see it now and don't remember. It's a, it's a big number. You can take a look at it afterwards because these are available for all participants, but a big number, the forecast in 2025. Some examples about the quality characterization work at Centria. So this is an example from the Nordic Industry Nordic project. And uh, we have uh, 
the analyzed results of minerals and sugars of bird stuff. And we have analyzed hundreds of bird sap samples from several forest owners during several years. An example about the uh, bilberry or blueberry. So the bilberry is it's the wild berry, and blueberry is normally uh, the cultivated berry. So if, if it's sold as a powder, how can you tell if this is uh, the powder is um, bilberry or blueberry? So at Centria, we have developed the analysis method total called total phenolics. And um, as you can see in the graph, the concentration of total phenolics for bilberry powder is higher than in blueberry powder. However, it is very confusing because on the market, you can see different terms, wild blueberry, so what it is. And also for marketing are used like antioxidant, antioxidation or antioxidant capacity. Well, at Centria, we have also developed the methods for um, antioxidant capacity measurements. And here you can see results of uh, antioxidant capacity and uh, total phenolics and antioxidant capacity correlates well with the total phenolic concentration and results for several uh, different uh, raw materials. The higher the antioxidant capacity or total phenolics concentration is, the uh, healthier it is. Here are examples of analysis results of five different bilberry or, or blueberry powders. As you can see, the concentration of total phenolics varies depending on species, treatment methods, or region. That is why it is very important that the methods have to be the same between the buyer and the vendor if the results are compared. And here you can see a um, uh, result from in a novel politic project where the uh, total phenolic concentration a sample, sample from Finnish company uh, is analyzed by three different laboratories, named the University of Latvia, Lithuanian uh, Agricultural and Forestry Research Center, and Centria. All laboratories have used their own methods and the methods of the other laboratories. As you can see, uh, it's not exactly the same, so there is some variation in the results. And to conclude, the question remains, how could Nordic enterprises sell their products as premium products and get a get better prices? Of course, uh, they should show proof of quality and possible proof of authenticity, because there are also fake products on the market. It's good to tell stories uh, behind your product and uh, company history, for example. Uh, you should invest in marketing and packaging. So here you can see our partners uh, in three different uh, Nordic project in industry Nordic, where, where we had uh, SLU as a partner and the three uh, Swedish municipalities, Wilhelmina, Dorothea and Åsela as target groups. More NBPs where we are focusing on uh, drying development and optimizing drying processes. It's, uh, Lula University of Technology and Who's Only Sells Carpet from Sweden. And Novel Baltic uh, which is focusing on the development of quality and authenticity develop, uh, methods and market demand in China and also the feasibility of technologies. Uh, so laboratories from Norway and Baltic countries. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer to those later, maybe. Thank you.